What's going on, everybody? You are listening and watching Heated Shenanigans Podcast, the only podcast bringing you the heat each and every single week. I am your host, Scott, and on today's episode, for those of you not watching on YouTube, I am joined by my good friend, Mr. Sam Mitchell from Autism Rocks and Rolls Podcast. Uh, he's got a great professional wrestling podcast. I, I had the uh, the good fortune of meeting Sam recently at a DCCW event in Portland, Indiana, and I am very honored to have Sam on today. Sam, how are you doing, buddy? Good. I, I hate to correct you, but it's actually an autism podcast called Autism Rocks and Rolls, but I'm a huge pro wrestling oh, okay. fan. I'm so happy to be here. Okay. I'm a big pro wrestling fan. I loved it since <laughs> I was six. Study the information about it and... Became a savant at pro wrestling. Well, that's good. So, how did you? Uh, what what drew you into professional wrestling, Sam? Just watched it basically through, like any child would find it, scrolling through the channel, bored as crap, and finding uh, pro wrestling and just falling in love with it. I think, but I, I didn't know what I loved about it back then, but what I love about it now, I think, and what I think I loved about it back then, looking at it as a twenty year old adult. It's just the characters and the confidence it gave me because I never had that confidence. And pro wrestling kind of helped me get confidence in a sense that I could play these characters that I wanted to play in real life, but I really couldn't because I didn't have really great self-esteem back then. Well, I'm definitely glad that you you found your self-esteem to to kind of get out of your shell here. You, uh, on your podcast, man, like you've been, you've had a lot of really cool guests on your podcast. I had heard them mention at the show that Rob Van Dam had been on your podcast. Is that correct? Yep. Well, that's awesome. So like how, uh, how long have you been doing the podcast? Um, since October, 2019, uh, it started initially as a hobby. But believe it or not, it grew so much that it had turned to a 501 non-C3, and now I have sponsors. I'm a vendor for some of the some events. So like the um, DCW, DCCW show, I was a vendor for. I had the privilege of doing that because I knew uh, the commentator real well, and we became really good friends. So I be, got to be a guest on his podcast, and um, just clicked, and I found you guys. I was wandering around. What was wandering around? I found you, and here we are today. I'm glad you found us, man. I remember when you when you came over to the to the booth, uh, and and we had we had got to talk, and and I had I had heard them talk about your your podcast and how successful it's been, and congratulations on all the success that you've had with it. Um, and I was I was thrilled when you shot me a text message asking to come on. I, I was very happy, and I, I wanted to thank you on here for taking the time and wanting to come on. Uh, problem. I like like talking about pro wrestling, man. I mean. Love it to I was six. Like I said, it just it hasn't grown away from me. Just like to keep coming back to it. Yes, the storylines keep me intrigued. So who's uh, who's your favorite wrestler right now? Well, one, of, one of the people I've had to have on the show, and it's not Rob Van Dam. It's the hardcore legend who we got to see at the DCW, DCCW show itself, Mick Foley. Favorite Mick Foley moment? Oh, that's a hard one. I think probably the obvious one, probably the Mankind versus Undertaker. But then it's pretty cool when he also debuted. I have to say when he debuted, he, he shifted the landscape at that time, and you knew he was a major player star, as someone said. you he, It wasn't soon he was going to be a major player now. Mm-hmm. Let's say mankind's had quite the uh, quite the career with the time in WCW, WWE, and ECW in between there. Where where were you first introduced to mankind? Was it WWE? Uh, yeah, it was WWE. I didn't I didn't study a lot of it until I got I until I liked it so much that I decided to learn more about pro wrestling and didn't realize it was back in existed longer before my time before my birth and I just got into it so much that I decided to keep going back and back and learning more about it 
and it's just stuck with me and I I love it and I learn and learn and learn I grow grew 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 well that's good man like I got into it when I was probably two years old um back in uh <laughs> well, that was several years ago um but my my first match was Sting and Ric Flair and I fell in love with Sting's character like the face paint, the the blonde hair, the colorful attire, that had me hooked. Mine was Sheamus versus Wade Barrett in a tables match. Can't remember what episode, sadly. I think it was a Raw, oh, if I remember good. correctly. But um, that's what mine was, and just fell in love with it. Fell in love with the characters. Fell in love with the concept of pro wrestling. So there was not much to it. There, that one moment that I saw the action. I knew that it was happening. And when I was a kid, I obviously thought it was real. So I thought, oh my gosh, they're fighting. But it's not like boring fighting where it's boxing, just bam, 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 or just boom, boom, boom. It's fl throwing people over a top rope. It's putting people in a fireman's carry and dropping them on their heads. Until I learned it was fake, which at first I didn't want to believe because how can they be faking this? How can they be faking getting hit with a steel chair? But then... I started to look it up, I'm like, okay, yep, it's fake, but I still think they take real risk. A hundred percent agree. Uh, you, the, the injuries catch up with you eventually. It may not be right away, but over time, you definitely pay for everything that you put your body through in professional wrestling. Yeah, look at Mick Foley. If you notice, he can barely get in the ring. That was rough, man. I, how'd you feel about that? Like, get, watching Foley get in the ring, like, he looked just stiff. Yeah, well, and I know it was kind of a disappointment because he was stiff, but they always say better late than never because I've had the, I got to have the privilege of commentating for these wrestling events for a couple times, but to do it with a big-time wrestler, you can't complain there. And a couple, which is... Not only where I got to see my old oh, friend McFoley, but meet a new kind of friend named the Boogeyman. So while kind of disappointing, it was the dream come true. Still, it it was a great night at that show, and, and Jared Bird over at DCCW throws on fantastic shows. And did you uh, did you talk to Boogeyman about it being on your on your podcast or sitting down and talking with you? We did. We sent an email, but we sadly have not heard back from him. Okay. I hope you get that return email. Sometimes that's... There's no better feeling when you get that email and you see that somebody you've been wanting to have on your, your podcast finally accepts and wants to speak with you. Yeah. Mick, we always said that Mick was going to be on at some point. You know, we have a funny story, Mick, but you not believe it or not, we met, we're friends now, and we, I met him like several times before, so I'll give you the full story about this. So first time we met him, this was like BC Autism Rocks and Rolls. It was at a meet and greet, and we just we just clicked, and you know I thought be it, yay, never gonna see him again. Well, on the show we kept that get other people said, who do you want on your show? We kept saying Mick Foley, Mick Foley, Mick Foley. Never heard from him, but this wrestling other wrestling podcast out there. This helped out and surprised me by having by having us meet again. And then the third time was he agreed to me on the show, so we did that. And then the fourth time, he was actually out doing a comedy little show in Bloomington, Indiana, where he's from, and that was really cool. And we got to see him again. And then the DCCW show. So met him a lot. And yeah, seen awesome. them all connected really big. Let's say, Sam, I, I am so happy that you got to have Mick Foley on your podcast and that you got to check off one of your bucket list guys. Who else would you like to have on your podcast and speak with you? Hmm. Well, that's a hard question. But, I mean, I've had a lot of amazing people, but I guess some future... Um, wrestlers I'm kind of hoping for are The Rock, big mental health advocate out there. 
um, The Big Show, and Roman Reigns. Those are all really great names. Thank you. For those out there that... Oh, you're welcome. Uh, for those out there unsure, where can they find your podcast at to listen to it? Well, they can find me on Podbean. Or watch. Yeah, no problem. They can find me on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, pretty much wherever you think I am, I'm there. And I'll tell you this, I didn't have McFoley only. I've had the honor of having Al Snow, who actually volunteered. We got to meet him at a Bloomington event. And we have RVD, who I actually just asked me on the show through Facebook Messenger. That's how I literally got him. Was he has a Facebook Messenger? Just asked him, hey, man, can I be on it? And I would have had to make sure it was really him. And it was really him. And he saw the message. And he's like, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay, sure. And it, there you go. Then finally, as of now, we've had Raven, who I just actually asked his publicist. And he said that because I'm autistic, which is kind of... Kind of, I kind of like, not gonna say it took offense, but kind of a slap in the face ordeal. But because of his niceness and me being autistic, I kind of got that privilege because I think he was kind of expecting me to be a little lower functioning. But I think I kind of surprised him. Well, so you're you're pretty high functioning, correct, for autism? Yeah, but I think Brain was expecting me to like being a low wheelchair bound and that's part of the mission actually that's why we're doing this is because of others views raven's point is kind of the reason why because when someone says that we're autism most people think like raven we're in a wheelchair we can't do much we're in nowhere he probably thought my mother wrote the script i sent him but that's not all of them is it some sure i won't lie to you there but there's some on the spectrum that are very high functioning or at least middle functions where they have some sense how to act in the world. So have you, um, what, what really, what are the goals for the, for your podcast? Like, what are you wanting to truly accomplish with it? Because I, I am so happy with what you've got going on over there. And I, I really think more individuals that, that have autism, should be doing stuff like this get get out there get get the awareness and really tell your story well the goal is to get more amazing people like some of the ones i've listed that i've had but also just to spread acceptance of autism and to show here's here's the deal i make this podcast very inclusive so sometimes i try to get guests that involve autism and to show that Mainly the main mission, really, of this podcast is to show people with the spectrum or other conditions that we not that we do not need to be fixed. But it's not just autism. It's really inclusive of anything. With mental health, I know a lot of people have mental health issues like anxiety, depression, OCD, Tourette's. That doesn't need to be down, down upon. Or, example, uh, sometimes with a story, I know sometimes I've had a guest who was an ex-convict. Okay, because he went to jail and had to serve some time does not mean he should be looked down upon because he changed. Now, some don't change. I will give them, give society that, but some do change. And he shouldn't be looked down upon for having to serve some time for a mistake he made. And I also had an episode dropped out today with a Make-A-Film Foundation. It's like Make-A-Wish, but with movies. The lady believes that these children with life-threatening conditions and illnesses still have a path to success. And I firmly believe that though these type of people should not be looked down upon because when you hear the word cancer, a lot of times it's bad news. And it, and it can, and it, and it is. I'm not going to lie to you. It's re me being realistic, realistic. But it's not, a, in my opinion, a death sentence. Even if it's age four, not death sentence, it just means you got a limited amount of time. To still impact a legacy because you can still do something before you go six feet under. That's fair. That it's it's all about living life to the fullest and, and making the most out of each day that you're given. Yeah. 
That's really what you do, and getting giving up getting opportunities because I think in life sometimes I think these pro wrestlers would agree. And I think this is in the pro wrestling world. Opportunities don't come down to that. Come to some of them. So an example, I know some of these lower card wrestlers, no one's going to give them an opportunity. So I think what they should do is probably make an opportunity for themselves. So for example, a lower card, why not? I know it's kind of scripted, but my point is, what if he went, it's kind of corny, but what if he went and attacked the Intercontinental Champion? He made an opportunity for himself. Because no one gave it to him. No, he wasn't the one chosen. But he made something out of himself because he chose to. And that's what we need to do. And sometimes these big opportunities like, oh my goodness, I want to go on Jeopardy. Well, well, but, 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 but. No, no buts. Sign up for it. Give it a shot. What the heck? Worst thing you do is say no and then you move on. That, that is very, very true. And that's really some advice a lot of people should take to... Uh take to heart out there just don't dwell on a lot of stuff especially stuff that you can't control uh, that's something I, I'm still learning to this day yeah I mean example of this is I went to Nashville the other day and I was actually a bozo and I didn't realize in the Grand Ole Opry they weren't allowed to have signs so I tried it we kind of sneaked it in there on that but um, I tried to get my poster to um, one of my favorite people I got to see. Do you want to happen? The security guard wasn't a mean guy about it. He was actually a really what nice happened? guy. But he was just like, no. I was like, okay. And then the next thing you know, moving along. He's, he, I got to give it still anyway <laughs> because of him taking the poster back, giving the poster to one of his backstage people and giving it to them, I guess. So someone was doing it for me. But my point is, all he did was say no. And then that was it. There was no, oh, what? No, no. I'm giving that to Chapel Hart. But it was okay. So I'm just saying, at least I tried. That's what I think we should go with, is at least we tried to give them that poster. Because if I didn't, then I would have never known if they would have taken it. But if I tried, then at least I would have had an opportunity. And I would tell you this. If that security guard did, wasn't there and, that sign, and there were no signs allowed, they would have 100% taken it. I, and, I, and I'm not just saying that on... Yeah. On what I saw, I'm just saw that based on observations and based on how they were acting to it when it was happening before the guard said no. So while you were at the Grand Old Opry, who who was it you were trying to uh, to meet there? Um, it wasn't meet really. I was trying to give a sign. So on America's Got Talent, I don't know if you watched that show or not, but um, there are these three African American ladies, I've and they were. They're pretty cool. Their name's Chapel Hart. And they were actually at the Grand Ole Opry, and it was their second time there. And I've always been a fan of them and Drake Milligan. So we, when we learned they were going to be there, we were going to go anyway on vacation. But it's even better because we saw knew that, hey, that, hey, oh my goodness, Chapel Hart was there. Well, I wanted to amplify my experience and first meet them, but then we saw there was no meet and greet tickets. So then I thought, you know what? My grandfather is an artist. Let's have him make a sign for us. And we did that. And while I didn't get to give it to them, there's a security guard who said the no, but I think he felt kind of bad. And he said, do you still have your poster? And my first thought was, oh, no, because I thought he was going to rip it. But I was wrong. He actually gave the poster to one of his backstage people. And I think if I, if hopefully the backstage person gave that sign to Chapel Hart. Yeah, that's a pretty good story. Like, I uh, I don't think I've had a whole lot of meet and greet encounters that weren't with professional wrestlers. So I, I'm, it's always nice to hear stories like this, like where people they go out and they try to meet uh, individuals that they like, and the, the stories that they that they go through in meeting these individuals. Yeah, and it's all based on opportunities. You got to make them because. Mick Foley, I made the opportunity. Chapel Hart, yeah, there were no meets and greets, but I made the opportunity by saying, you, and then signaling, hey, come here, here's a gift for you, or attempting to do that at least. 
And then Al Snow, that just happened by coincidentally. And RVD happened just through a messenger, just through a simple message. So I'm like, the problem is, I think, people are not wanting to either A, pay the money, which I can understand, but also not take the chances. Okay? I don't believe in that. Take the chance. Send that, if, they're, if that celebrity of yours has a Facebook messenger, send them a message and tell them how much of a fan you are, because you never know. They might respond. Or if you want to meet them, say, hey, you know what? It's my birthday. I've been a big fan of yours. Can I just talk to you for like five minutes? What the heck? Give it a shot. Say like like you said earlier, man. Like the the worst thing they're gonna tell you is no, or maybe they don't see it and they don't respond. Yeah, or they see and they and they and they don't respond too, but, which is kind of aggravating. But it's but at least they saw it, which is saying something. I know. I think I sent a message to Jim Ross, and his picture was right beside that message. And you know, you saw you if they saw it when they had that picture, and just the fact that he saw it for me, yeah. says something. So when it comes to that aspect of life, I'm not a hard guy to please really when it comes to it. Now in other situations, yeah, I'm kind of a hard guy to please. But when it comes to the those type of situations, like the Jim Ross one, I'm pretty much like, eh, whatever, sweet. I, just, I like to celebrate the small steps. So there's a... Um... Understandable, understandable. Me too, me too. Um, I was going to ask you, there's a big event coming up uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 28th, 9th, and 30th at Heroes and Legends in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Are you going to be at that show? No, I think that's too far for us, buddy. <laughs> okay. Well, I was just curious because we were going to have our podcast there and I'm bringing in Francine and Shane Douglas to do a meet and greet with, with their fans. I was kind of hoping you're going to be there. It would have been nice to, to do an interview again with you in person there too, and have you meet uh, Shane and Francine. Maybe I have your phone number. So I can definitely see what we can do. I mean, depends on what's going on that week too, but I got to look and see, but I'll definitely get back. I'll see if I can get back to you on that. Listen, I know Fort Fort Wayne's a bit of a drive even for me. I'm I'm in Lafayette, and my goodness, it's like two hours plus I think to get from here to there. And I got to stop in Kokomo to pick up one of my co-hosts to uh, drive him to the show. So I'm gonna be on the road for a while that day. Yeah, I I've been on the road for five hours, so I think if I can do that, I think I can do much. Going on the road for a little while. I'm pretty, and plus I'm a pretty good road driver. I just sit there and take the scenery in. And I, that's what I love. I love riding in a car just to see what you see and not have to worry about driving because there's so many crazy drivers out there, my, my wife being one of them. Oh, uh, boy. I'm not, I don't drive because I get too nervous because that is a 300-and-something-pound weapon. One, one strike, boom, you're done. I don't drive because of depth perception and there's too much going on. And uh, no offense, but the fact that your wife's a crazy driver doesn't help much. <laughs> no, no, she's she's okay. She's she's not that bad. I, I give her I give her a lot of crap because it, it's fun to 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 poke at her with it. But oh, don't worry about poking um, fun too. I, I poke going fun back at on all the time. I mess around with people. Basically, I would probably be like a, a pesky brother that you would see in the movies Jackass. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. So I wanted to go back on onto your onto your, your podcast that you you've had and you've had so much success with. Or is it on any social media as well that, that listeners and, and future listeners can find and help support you on social media? That's on my website too, autismrocksandrolls.com. It says where I can be found, but also has like some social media pages where you can look at. So for example, I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. So definitely look at the website to lead you in the right direction. 
let's say we're we're friends on Facebook. I gotta get you on Instagram. Uh, I'm not on Instagram a lot, but once I get back on there, I'll get we'll, we'll give you a follow on there. All right. Thanks. Do you do? Oh, you're you're welcome. Do you do Twitter at all? Uh, I have a Twitter account, but I rarely use it. I mainly use that for business. A lot of oh, a lot of times, I'll be honest. I use Facebook and Snapchat, yeah, I, Twitter, and I'm good to go. But anything else that's on there is business, really purposes. So I, I pretty much live on Twitter. It feels like that's where a lot of my communication is is on Twitter, which it's easy. It's uh, the only thing I don't like is that whole like the amount of characters you get to use for a message. That's the only thing I don't like. Yeah, that I, that's why I don't use it. I know I'm like you know what if I had something to say. I'm not gonna have a. I'm not having a limit on my voice. I'm having a limit. I may have a limit on guests, granted, but I'm not having a limit on voice. So with professional wrestling, Sam, um, do you have a favorite company that you enjoy watching? Do you are you an AEW fan or a WWE oh, yeah. fan more? You kind of like them both the same or Impact? Yeah, WWE has helped me a lot in my life. So. Because I feel like now, I feel like I'd be betraying that company and my bond with it if I went to another company. So I like to stick stick strictly with WWE because just the fact of how much it's helped me. And the cool part is now some of these major characters are now returning. So now it's even a better time to be a fan. I mean, look at who's returned. Braun Strowman, Karrion Cross, Bray Wyatt. They're all returning now and... I gotta see. I gotta see what's gonna happen with them. It's one thing about wrestling I love. Keeps you intrigued. Makes you want to wonder what's gonna happen the next week. It doesn't lose that. Doesn't lose that speculation easily. No, no, it doesn't. And that's that's one of the things I've always liked about it. It's something I can I can watch. I can forget about everything that's going on in the world. I can sit there and just get lost in professional wrestling and. It's a love I've carried with me ever since I was a little boy. Yeah, because but you wonder what's ne what happened next. Like so, for example, I always wonder what's next. What's going to happen with this is an old rivalry? I think a long old rivalry, not too old though. But with Rusev and Bobby Lashley, I always wondered, oh, this is a triangle affair. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? Because I know we don't like to see them often, but for a show, it's kind of cool. Very much so, my friend. Well, before we before we wrap everything up here, uh, is there anything that you want to tell the fans out there listening? Anything that you want to get promoted for yourself? Um, so uh, you can check out my website on autismrocksandrolls.com. Uh, you'll learn about more of my wrestling uh, knowledge. You'll understand the fact that I know every WrestleMania main event out there. So that's a nice gesture for you. But I also talk a lot about the spectrum and also talk about my beliefs and just how we think. And it's a great podcast to be a part of. And it's a wonderful journey that you will definitely take something from. If you even check out five minutes of it. And I, I do want to take this time to encourage all of my viewers, listeners, supporters, what have you definitely check out Sam's podcast. You won't be disappointed. This is a truly remarkable young man that I am very, very honored reached out to me to want to be on my podcast. Um, it's one of the things that I love doing most in this world is speaking with people just like Sam and letting them tell their story and and promote their stuff on my podcast. And Sam, I, I truly I want to thank you, my friend. Thank you for taking time to be on this podcast with me. It truly has meant a lot to me. Of course, not a problem, man. I Thank you for letting me come on. Oh, you're most welcome. Well, uh, everybody, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. I am Scott, and I will see you on the next episode.